Hi everybody, I'm Marco Fiorini and today I want to talk about negative harmony. Um, I've noticed that in the last weeks there's been a lot of interest on the web around this topic, also thanks to a couple of interviews with uh, Jacob Collier. And so, um, since I've been studying um, negative harmony for the last year, I've decided to share what I've learned so far. And I want to say that I've learned these concepts uh, uh, from Steve Coleman, which is a great saxophone player and composer. If you don't know him, you should definitely check out his music and Embase Collective. Um, I'm putting the, in the description uh, a link to Embase website where you can register for free and find a lot of useful videos um, talking about interesting musical concepts as well as negative harmony or tonal polarity as he calls it. So all credits to Steve and Embase guys. Um, then I've, learned, I've read the book by Ernst Levy, uh, A Theory of Harmony, um, which I find it uh, great but a bit confusing sometimes. So uh, I decided to like elaborate my own way of look at it, which is very similar to the one Steve Coleman does. And I want to start from a melodic point of view because I've noticed that um, Jacob Collier only talks about harmonic concepts like a G7 becoming an F minor 6. And that's true, but um, I guess that if you don't understand the uh, building blocks of this theory, which are melodic concepts, uh, you can't um, work very well with the harmonic ones. Okay, So let's start with the C major scale, which hopefully we all know. This scale has a structure of tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. And this is very important because we are not just inverting tones in a random way, but we want to preserve their functional tonal polarity. Okay, uh, we'll see it later. Um, for now, it's important to understand this structure and uh, the emphasis of this perfect fifth because our ear. Uh, recognizes this interval as the more consonant interval um, and the tone which is at the bottom of this interval interval as the tonic so when we play this interval we can say no doubt C is the tonic even if we reverse it okay we have a perfect four we hear the top note as a tonic which is still C okay so the negative version of this scale is what is called negative G major scale, okay, and it's this scale going downwards from G. Okay, well, you can say that this scale is a, a G Phrygian or an E flat major scale, okay, which starts from the third degree, and this is true speaking uh, about tones, but it's not true in this case because. If you think in these terms, the whole theory will break down because, again, we all, we are talking about functional tonal polarity. In a Phrygian scale, for instance, the second uh, tone is uh, um, at a minor second above. Okay, it's an ascending scale. Well, this scale it's descending, and the second tone has a is at a major second distance. Okay. You can see that this scale has the same structure, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, as the major scale. That's why uh, it's it's uh, mirror image, okay? And it's called negative because it has the same structure and it goes downwards. Because what's ascending in the positive word becomes descending in the negative word, and vice versa, as we'll see later. What's descending in the positive word becomes ascending in the negative word. It's called negative G major scale because it's generated from G and it goes downwards using the same structure as the C major scale. And here's the important concept of tonic and generator because in the positive word we only have uh, the tonic, okay? Because it's the scale we, which uh, uh, ref is referring to uh, every other tones, okay? Every every tone in the scale is referring to C as a tonic, uh, but it's also the generator because it ge it generates the the whole structure. Okay, it's the one as you can see, 
and we're going upwards from here. In the negative word, generator and tonic are not the same tone, okay? In this case, G is the generator because it's the tone from which generates the structure descending, okay? But C is the tonic. And that's why it's, uh, this scale is the mirror negative image of the C major scale because we still hear this perfect five, perfect fifth, okay? Even if in the scale is descending, okay, we still hear, if we play the interval together, we hear C, the bottom tone, as the tonic, okay? So that's very important to understand. Again, it's functional, all this um, stuff. For instance, uh, the gravity, the polarity that this B has to go to the C uh, is the same gravity as this A flat uh, going to this G. Okay, when you play the C scale, this gravity is the same of this. You can hear it, okay? So that's why it's very important to start from a melodic uh, point of view. And I want to start, as Steve Coleman does, um, with a very well-known melody, which is Happy Birthday, okay, in the key of C major. It's very important to underline the key, because, um, uh, again, it's all functional. And Happy Birthday start on the 5 of the, uh, the tonality, okay? So we are in the key of C, and the first tone is G, which is the 5. And I've put numbers uh, below every tone in order to understand um, the phrases, okay, because at first it may be a little confusing because um, again what's ascending will become descending, okay, uh, the first phrase is ascending, okay, right, and then it ascends even more, and then there's an octave jump, right, Okay, so I've put numbers because we are dealing with this scale and the negative version will deal with this scale. So the 5 of the negative version will be the 5 of this scale. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right. So it will be C. And the first phrase, which is ascending, will be descending because we'll have 5, 5, 6, 5, 1, 7. Okay. Even here when we have this octave jump, which is... Five, five, five. We'll have five and then five down, an octave down. Okay. So the phrase will go in this way. Six point one seven. Five six point two nine. Five five three one seven six. Four three one two nine. And the negative version has the same numbers, okay? You can see both of them in this way. You can see that we start on C, which is the 5 of the scale going downwards from G, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to do an octave above 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? And we have the phrase which in the positive word goes upwards, here goes downwards, okay? So I have Right? And five by six by one seven. Five by six by two one. Again, here it's the octave jump. So you can see that you can also hear that every tone has the same gravity, has the same polarity. Uh, of the positive version, but of course it's descending and it's all referred to this negative G major scale. Okay, you can hear that we, we go when we we end on the one, that one is G. Okay. Now let's deal a bit with uh, mm, the harmonic aspects. Okay, we all know that we can harmonize C major scale, okay, with triads, for instance. Yeah, that's our harmonization of the C major scale, okay, we know we have the one chord, which is C major, two chord, D minor, three chord, E minor, 
4 chord F major, 5 chord G major, 6 E minor, A minor, sorry, 7 B diminish, and then again 1 or 8. Okay, so how we find the the negative chord of these ones, okay? For instance, let's start with the first one, which is G, C major. Okay, it's a chord built of the one degree of the scale, and it has one, three, five. Okay, so it's built on thirds, as we all know. It's triad, so uh, one, three, five. Well, we have to go to the first degree of the negative scale scale okay one and we build in triads going downwards so one three five so that's the chord from the well, go, thinking from up to down we have G E flat C it's a C minor of course but C minor it's um, is it's a, a telluric adaptation name meaning that we think of that chord um, from the down up, okay, from C going upwards. The lyric uh, um, means uh, like an, an Earth point of view, okay, we are on Earth, on planet Earth, and we see everything from the ground up, okay, down to up. And, and this is the telluric adaptation, okay, uh, which is very useful because it, it deals with terms and chords that we know very well we all know C minor chord okay we we only we always think of chords starting from down okay but this chord it's called negative G major because it's generated from G and it goes downwards okay so negative with the same structure of the G major chord which is a major third going down okay G to E flat it's a major third as well as C to, to E of the positive word so we have major third one two three and then a minor third three to five or a perfect fifth uh, from the uh, the generator so we have one three five with the same intervals okay uh, as a positive chord major chord but descending so negative G major because it's generated from G with a major structure, major triad structure, but negative going downwards. Uh, the important thing to understand is that again, G is the generator of this chord, but the tonic is C. It's always a, a fifth below. So here is the harmonization of the negative G major scale, both in absolute conception, which is negative G major, as I told you, or telluric adaptation. So you hear a C minor chord, okay, because the, the tonic is C, but the chord is generated from G, okay, which is the first degree of the scale. So again, for instance, um, let's look at the five, okay, is G chord, of course, in a in a positive word, we we have the G B D, okay. So we go to the fifth degree of the negative G major scale, which is C, okay, one two three four five. We go downwards with a major third and then a minor third or a perfect fifth from C. That's why we call it negative C major because we know that on the five there's a major triad. Okay, so negative C major, but in the telluric adaptation this chord is F minor because we have C, E flat, F from up to down. Okay, you can see that. Mm, what's positive, what's, what's major, like the 1, the 4 and the 5 become minor, okay, 1, 4, 5 and they are still the pillars of the tonality, okay, even if they are minor uh, but you can see that in absolute conception they are major, negative G major, negative D major, negative C major and what's minor, okay, like the 2, the 3 and the 6 become positive, yeah, become major, sorry, okay what's diminished stays diminished <laughs> that's curious okay and what Jacob Collier is talking about is that you can substitute the, the 5 the G okay the cadence of um, 5 going to 1 it has the same polarity okay as the uh, the, the minor 4 okay
uh, to a one. But it has a different color, okay? Like the five one is more bright, the four, the minor four to one is more dark, okay? Something different, but we'll work about this stuff later, okay? Maybe in another video when we talk about the, the cadence, the perfect cadence. I don't want to to say more things that you can understand at first. So um, we have that this G chord, okay, the five becomes uh, an F minor, an F minor, okay. Um, so la last thing, if we have, for instance, a G seven, that becomes an F minor six. That's what Jacob Collier is saying, because we are going to the five of the negative G major scale. We build a chord which we will call negative C7. Okay, it's negative C major. We'll add the seventh, so negative C7, which is starting from C going downwards, major third, perfect fifth, minor seven. Okay, so from up to down is C E flat F. Sorry, C E flat F D. Okay, but the tonic is not D. You can say, well, this is D half diminished. No. Tonic is not D, but it's F, because as we've seen here, uh, the generator is here, the tonic is a fifth below, so the generator in this case is C, okay, negative C7, the generator is C, tonic is F, and then we have an, a D down here, okay? So if we uh, push this and having F on the bass, we have F minor 6, you can hear it, okay, that goes to 1 for instance a C minor, but it can go uh, to, to a positive, okay? That's the minor uh, perfect cadence, but I, I guess we'll see it better in another video. So I'll put the, um, this PDF for downloading in the, the description, as well as my um, Bachelor of Music thesis. It's only in Italian, but I I hope that it may help. Uh, it may help um, Italian people as well as foreign-speaking uh, people. But um, okay, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope this could be helpful. And um, see you later.